Okay, so for curve sketching, um, I've just got a little summary of guidelines here. You don't, I mean, uh, you know, it's not necessary that you write it all down, but um, basically this is taking all the ideas that we've already talked about, about functions and what their graphs might look like. So things like before calculus, when we talked about domain and range, um, we talked a little bit about asymptotes in Math 12, um, a little bit more in calculus when we did limits. And then this was more so the stuff that we're working on now, which is critical points, um, concavity, increasing, decreasing. So this is just a sort of synopsis of all that stuff. Um, some other things that you might uh, remember, uh, things like intercepts, that's another thing for graphs. So basically the goal in curve sketching is to take what we know, what we've learned about curves, and try to put it all together to make a sketch. Okay, so I'm just going to, for those of you who don't have the notes, I'm just going to give you a minute here to um, take some notes down. So aside from the things like asymptotes that we've talked about, what those look like, we've talked about, you know, what's an intercept. The things that are new to us, or relatively new, is this idea of first derivative being increasing, decreasing, also concavity being second derivative positive or second derivative negative. So we're going to put those ideas together. So just to help you think about what those mean, um, here's the first set of sketches that we're going to put together. So concave up means you, got, you hold your hand like this and all your neighbors laugh at you, right? But it's smart because then you're thinking concave up. If it's decreasing, which side of my uh, hand is that if it's concave up and decreasing? The left. right or left side? Left. Okay, uh, let's just say it's this side, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at it backwards, so I'm not sure if I'd say it right. But it's decreasing on this part and concave up, so the picture would look like this if we were to connect that curve together, right? Similarly, if it's concave up but it's increasing, then that means the curve would have to look like this as it goes through the points. And if we finish off, okay, decreasing, or sorry, concave down and decreasing, okay, so that's going to be um, this side that's falling. So decreasing but concave down, and here is increasing and concave down. So you'll see why those curves, that's what we're going to have to think about here in this uh, next couple examples. And you'll see why those uh, four curves come up a lot. So um, I'm going to do this first one with you. So, uh, the y-axis the y doesn't have its values on there. Uh, that's OK. We'll assume the scale is 1 for the y values. Not but, the scale for x. Anyways, we'll deal. If that's a problem, we'll deal with it later. But I don't think we need to know the scale uh, at the moment. So first of all, we ask ourselves some of those questions like domain and range. Are there any issues here? Uh, not really. No, no problems. It's going to be all real numbers, right? How about uh, asymptotes? Would you expect to find any asymptotes here? No. No. So um, let's just move ahead then. Let's take a look at some key points for the calculus type of stuff. So we'll start with the first derivative. Um, I'll get 6x squared plus 12x. And of course, it would be convenient for me to write that as 6x times x plus 2. So I'm talking about x being 0 or negative 2 as my critical numbers. So those are going to have some special meaning for me. Um, the other thing I'm going to want to do with the first derivative is I'm going to want to use it so that I can um, make a number line and figure out where this graph is increasing and where it's decreasing. So this is first derivative test kind of stuff. So here's, um, say, negative 2. Here's 0. Now remember, we're looking for information from the derivative. So we're going to be using the derivative to find out values here. You can use your calculator, but it's pretty simple here. If I put in a value, for example, let's just say I put in negative 1. Okay, that means this will be a negative here, while this would be a positive. So a negative times a positive means the middle would be negative. You can do this for all three sections, or if you totally panic, you can, of course, try and plug it in a calculator. One thing you've got to be aware of, though, is um, I'm not going to let you have a graphing calculator if I want to test your ability to curve sketch, right? 
Um, I'm going to want to see that you can do it by hand. So, a, you know, a non-graphing calculator might be all right. Okay, good. But um, anyways, we should be able to plug in some values here. Like, for example, let's try, I don't know, pick five. What do you think is going to happen if I put five in? Positive. positive times a positive, yeah. So, see, it's not so bad. And then if I put in, like, negative five. It is positive, yeah. So if it was like negative 5, this would be a negative times a negative, so there we go. Okay? So no calculator needed, but of course, um, I don't mind you using a non-graphing one. When you use a graphing calculator, that's when problems start. Well, I can't really test your ability to curve sketch with a graphing calculator, that's all. <laughs> You'll just draw what the graphing calculator shows you. So, um, second derivative now, we're going to look for concavity in this curve. So this will be 12x plus 12. Um, and again, it's going to be convenient for me to write it as 12 times x plus 1. So x equals negative 1 is going to be uh, a possible inflection point, something I'm going to want to keep track of. So let's find out here. On this number line, it's going to be best if we try to line up this negative 1 with the number line I've already used up here. So for example, if I put negative 1 there, um, keeps them kind of lined up. <coughs> so again, in this situation, if I'm negative, then I'm going to be a negative number in here. So it'll be a negative on this side. If I was a number like 5, this will be positive. So I can figure out the concavity without having to use my calculator. So we know quite a bit about this graph, but we still want to find some basic points to help move, move our curve through. So there's a lot of information about the curve, we just don't know any bait, we don't have like a, anything to anchor this curve to. So some of those important points I mentioned already were here, um, here, and um, let's put them in and see what we end up with. So at x equals 0, It'll be negative 3 up here in the function. Um, what if we put in x equals negative 2? Okay, let me see if I can do this without a calculator. So that's negative 8 times 2. So negative 16 plus 24 is negative, no, nope, positive 8. Take away 3 is 5. Okay. Wait, are we sure negative 2 is a critical point? Um, yes, because it'll make this equal to, uh, this one up here will equal zero. Okay, let's <laughs> so the last point that we have here is negative one. And if we put in negative one, um, it's going to be negative two plus six. So that's four minus three is one. Is that the hint you were trying to give me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> So now I've got some points, and those are going to be like what I anchor this curve to. So let's plot them in. So there's 0, negative 3. Um, negative 2 and positive 5 will be up here. And negative 1, positive 1 will look like that. So all I've done is, is labeled my points uh, that I found here. So now this is going to kind of remind you of when we talked about doing the graph of a reciprocal. We're going to move one step at a time. So let's take a look at the left side of negative 2. So that means when I'm on this part of the graph, what's happening? That's what I want to know. So I'm going to look at my number lines and figure out what's happening. This graph is increasing, yet it is concave down. So you go concave down, and you think, which part is increasing? Okay, that means it would have to look about like, um, let's see my that, something like that. Then, um, as I move between this, this section here, between 0, or sorry, negative 1 and 2, it now says that the graph is decreasing, yet still concave down. So if it's uh, decreasing and concave down, then that means it's the second part of the curve here, will be about like that. And I'm going to keep walking along. I'm still um, in the next part when I go between negative 1 and 0. I'm still 
decreasing, but this time I'm going to be concave up. So concave up, but decreasing, that's going to look like this. And then the last section, which is um, from 0 on, that's going to be increasing and concave up. So increasing concave up, that's the rest of this. It's going to kind of look like part of the parabola there. So that would be my, uh, my best sketch. Now, of course, your graphing calculator can do better than me, but considering I only found three points, you're going to find that curve is pretty good. I'm going to get you to try the next one then. I'll let you do the whole lead up on your own. Real similar. I'm all apologize. Some of you may have the old set of notes from uh, there was a different graph. Um, apparently, the scale was wrong on the old graph, so the, the new one is working properly. Okay, so I'm going to try and catch up. I realize some of you are still working at it, but uh, keep, keep discussing. Figure out if you're uh, on the right track. I changed my scale. <laughs> 81 minus 108. Plus 81 minus 98. That is 17. Oh, sorry, um, just a second here. Yeah, that should be a three. Thank you. Wait, why are two of the intervals negative? Um, well, this X something something being That's a good that's a good question. Um let me just finish writing up this number line, and then I will address your question, Anthony, which is a good one. So um, I believe this is going to be positive, negative, positive. So before we go and talk about the uh, points, let's talk about what Anthony asked is, how come there's two negatives here? Well, one way you can think about the derivative up at the top here, if you notice, what kind of numbers come out of 4x squared, positive or negative? Only positives. That means it really has no effect on whether we go uh, positive or negative. It's always going to be a positive number. So basically, it's like this is the only part that can change the sign. That's why it's negative, negative, then positive. Plus, I, I remember I had told you they don't always work out that they alternate, so it's good that I at least bring one up that I show you. Sometimes it doesn't work. you got to actually test each, each uh, interval. I don't see. There are no asymptotes to this function, but, but and then that's the only way something can be decreasing. Touch zero, let's decrease some more. Just, touch zero again without starting to increase. Just trust me on this one for now. When we see the picture, I think maybe it'll make a bit more sense. But it, this is, in fact, correct that it's negative, then negative. It's not, um, uh, so what you should think of this, Anthony, is it's, it's decreasing, and then it's flat, and then it keeps decreasing. So I can quickly show you a, a graph that looks like that. For those of you who are wondering, here's a graph that's decreasing. Here's where the derivative goes horizontal, and here's, it continues to decrease. That's a graph that makes this pattern happen, right? It's decreasing, and probably somewhere about here, it'll have a horizontal tangent. So negative, zero, negative. Okay, so um, if we're, this is where we're at. We have some key points that we need to, some key points that we need to um, highlight. So I've got zero, three, and zero, two. So if I put those points in, at zero, it's going to be worth 10. Uh, let's see here. At two... Uh, 16 minus 32, so negative 16 plus 10, so is that 6, is that right? 2 and negative 6, yeah, okay. And then um, the last one, which is at 3, is that? Okay. Um, so now I'm going to plot these points. So 0, 10, then um, 2, negative 6, so that'll be about here. 
and 3, negative 17. So 3 and negative 17 will be about there. So I'm going to use now the information to walk myself ac across this and figure out what's happening to the curve. To the left side of 0, this is where I am on the left side of 0. I am decreasing and concave up. So if I'm decreasing and concave up, that means my curve is going to look like this. It's going to sort of swoop down and connect there, decreasing, concave up. Okay, for the next thing, which goes from 0 to 2, this piece of the graph here, that's where I am on the number line. I'm somewhere in the middle here like this, which is still decreasing, yet concave down this time. So decreasing and concave down, that means the curve changed to go like this. And from 2 to 3, so in this section here, here's where I'm at in the graph. From 2 to 3, I'm in this section, which is decreasing, but concave up. So de or sorry, um, yep, decreasing and concave up. So it's going to look like this as it connects the dot. And the final piece, the final piece when I go from um, three onwards, it is increasing and concave up. So something which is increasing and concave up will roughly look like this. That is not what my graph here looks like. It... So the last one we're going to take a look at um, is a rational function. So it's, a, I mean, I guess it's a little more interesting in that we have a few more problems to deal with. So let's walk through it together. Are there any asymptotes to deal with here? Uh, three and negative three. Yeah, most people look at those ones first. So there's um, asymptotes. When we hit x equals plus or minus 3, is there any other asymptotes? No. 1. How on earth did you know that? Ah, somebody that paid attention in the limits unit. Yeah. So this was the, uh, the limit as x goes to infinity. This was, um, I believe I referred to it as the Bill Gates math. It's like if I gave you a billion dollars and I took away nine, you're not going to be heartbroken. So as these numbers get huge, they get very large, we said, well, that doesn't really matter anymore because the numbers are so big. So as they get bigger and bigger, this is going to approach one. So it was really simple math we were doing because we were kind of chucking away everything that wasn't as significant. Only the big fish, like Bill Gates, they were the only ones that mattered. Okay. So um, there would be a, a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. So I'm going to go and plot those right now. So here's um, y equals 1. And I have two vertical asymptotes, one here at negative 3. Whoops. Um, one here at negative 3. And one here at positive 3. So now I'm going to uh, go into the derivatives and look for uh, my critical points, that kind of stuff. So first derivative, derivative of the top times the bottom. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So um, if I tidy this up a little bit, I'm going to get 2x cubed minus 18x minus 2x cubed. So that's nice because some of this is going to cancel out. So 2x cubed and negative 2x would be gone. So I have um, negative 18x over x squared minus 9 all squared. So, um, critical points here. Where will I find them? So, yeah, 3 and negative 3 are still on there. And 0. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to have to do the second derivative on another sheet because I've written too large here to go uh, on the same one. Yeah. Okay, so for the second derivative, um, this is what I was working with. It was negative 18x over x squared minus 9. So let's find out about this one. Um, <clears throat> derivative of the top will be negative 18 times the bottom. Take away, uh, take away the top times the derivative of the bottom. Um, whoops, chain rule. So this one, uh, maybe I'll do a little explanation here. So chain rule on the bottom is going to be 2 times x squared minus 9 times 2x. And it'll all be over the bottom squared. So again, I want to try and tidy this um, I want to try and tidy this up. So one thing I can see is I can see x squared minus 9 in all those pieces. So I'm going to try and target these, uh, these three here. So I got this, I got this, and I got this. So I'm going to try and factor it out. Okay. So if I factored it out from top and bottom, what I'd be left with, um, that means there would only be one left here. This one would be gone, and this would become a 3. So that would be um, negative 18 plus 18x times, uh, let's see here, 4x. So let's see what I can do with this here. So that'll be 72x squared minus 18 over x squared minus 9 cubed. So why don't I just stop here for a second. Um, the factoring part may be the one part that I jumped a little fast on. Those three highlighted pieces, right? every piece had one, so I just took one off of all of them. So four went to three, two went to one, and one disappeared. Uh, yes, never mind. I thought I, I knew it wasn't going to be that simple, but that was good. Uh, I was just checking to see if you... Uh, understood what I did. So this will be um, 18 squared. And what's 18 times 9? So 162. Okay, so there we go. Let's, let's tidy this up. That'll be um, 54 x squared plus 162. And I could factor it a little more, but the only reason I'm looking to factor it is to figure out if there's any inflection points where it might equal zero or be undefined. So is it possible to make this equal to zero? Ming is very confident that it cannot be. You're a smart guy. Ming, tell us why. Um, 18 squared is positive, so if you add something to it, it will equal zero. That's right. Positive number here because I'm squaring it. Positive number here. You know, the worst I can do is 162. It'll be larger than, greater than or equal to 162. So the only possible place I'm going to get inflection points from here is at 3 and negative 3 still. Okay. So I'm going to take my second derivative and my first derivative, and we've got to make number lines. So let me go back to the, um, I'll go back to that slide so I can put the number lines on it. What was the final second derivative that you gave you? I'll let you, I'll give you a second in case you need to copy any of this in. Okay, so I'll flick back. And the two number lines, if this is my first derivative, what I was interested in was these points here at negative 3, 0, and positive 3. In the second derivative, I was interested in a, uh, the changes from negative 3 to 3. Okay, so I'm going to give you a minute just to figure out where it's concave up, where it's increasing, etc. You can put your positives and negatives on, and then we'll start again. All right, so um, this first first number line here, what's the sequence look like? Yeah, so we get positive, positive, negative, negative. Yes. 
Okay, and then in the second number line, what's the sequence look like there? Positive, negative, positive? Okay, so let's discuss now. Um, sorry, was it positive for all three? Um, I believe the middle is concave down, if I remember correctly. Where does zero come from? Um, zero comes from the first derivative here, because if I put in zero, yeah. that gives me one of my critical points. So even though we did all that extra math, the nice thing is um, if we check our, our points that we want to plot, I can't plot x at 3 or negative 3, because that's the asymptote. The asymptotes are already been drawn. So the only place I need to look at is zero. And if I substitute in x equals zero, I would get a value of zero. So this is the only point that I have for reference, which is there. So here's what the rest of the clues tell me. It tells me it's um, the start of the graph is increasing and concave up. So increasing and concave up, that means this is the only possibility. It's got to look like this. How come it couldn't be there like that? It's going to do what? It's going to hit the asymptote. It's not allowed to do that, right? That, that, means the asymptote. that means exactly that it would be like this because otherwise we'd bang into the asymptote and that's a no-no. Okay. Now, um, the next part here is concave down. It is incre Oops, that's not a 10. Um, it is increasing, but concave down. So it's going to look like this. It's going to come up and connect. Then it is decreasing and concave down. So it will one more time decreasing concave down. And finally, it says that it's decreasing but concave up. So again, concave up and it's going to be decreasing. It's got to be like this. And again, it couldn't do this because otherwise it's going to hit the asymptote, and that's not allowed to happen. So it has to be the picture that's shown in red right now. 